So, good evening everyone. Um, this is Hassan from the Spiritual Walks. I have a guest today, or actually I'm in his place, so I'm a guest as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is Amir uh, from Philosophize, which is short for Philosophize and Dies. Um, I guess we should start, you know, talking about, you know, the whole concept of uh, Philosophize. But just a bit of background, uh, me and Amir have been uh, close friends for like a good five to six years. Uh, we've gone to uni together. Um, and essentially, we have conversations like the one we're about to have almost every other day um, for the past six years. We discuss matters such as philosophy, religion, um, any, any form of seeking the truth, mysticism, um, and all of that sort of stuff. And essentially, we wanted to kind of bring you guys along on, on this conversation. Um, but yeah... Along the along our journey, we started YouTube channel. So I started the spiritual walks. You started uh, philosophize. So so tell us a bit more about uh, philosophize for all of those who, who don't know. So philosophize, um, basically philosophize and dies, like you said, uh, is the concept of. Actually, to give you some background story of why I started it, um, when I would play video games, I would find it like. It's, it's nice and fun, but at the same time, it's kind of dull. Like, you're not learning anything, you're not doing anything productive. So what I started to do while I'm playing playing is I'd put, like, podcasts on the side, audiobooks, whatever it may be. Mm. And that became something, like, I look forward to. <laughs> right? I'd, I'd wake up, I'd be like, okay, I'll go to uni as soon as I'm back. I'll mm. hop on, play some league or whatever it may be, and I'll listen to some podcasts on the side. So because of that, and after a while... Uh, I noticed that, okay, I have an interest in philosophy, I love gaming, I love listening to it on the side, why now, why now not combine the two and present it for other people that enjoy doing the same thing? Mm. So the idea is now you get to watch some soothing gameplay with some relaxing music while I speak about topics that can vary from on different fields, so history, yeah. psychology, philosophy, whatever it may be that I feel is worth talking about, is informative, you know, you learn something from it, something practical that will actually directly impact your life. Mm. Uh, actually, it's very similar to kind of what you do in the sense that, you know, you're looking out for people, kind of, you know what I mean? You're trying mm. to put out something meaningful that could benefit people, mm. you know? Yeah. And um, I know you from before, but I think I'd like to still hear what is it that really motivates you to kind of do yeah. it on a daily basis. Yeah, so so essentially, um, so it's called the spiritual walks because number one, I really enjoy taking walks. And number two, uh, taking a walk is a, is a symbol for, you know, going on a sort of journey. You know, whether it's a walk through a park, that's, a, that's an adventure, right? It's a mini little adventure, right? Um, and or whether you are exploring into uncharted territories on the other side of the planet in some forest you know essentially you know there's walking involved and you're walking towards a destination but with this i wanted to call this the spiritual walks because essentially we are all on a sort of spiritual journey whether some of us know it or not we we are on a spiritual journey um we are all seeking the truth so from a from, from the moment we are born, or even maybe in our mother's womb, we we immediately begin to explore the nature of life, right? So like, you know, when you have a newborn baby crawling around, you know, putting everything in its mouth, it's trying to figure out what this is. Is it something edible, right? It's, it's an explorative process throughout. Mm. Uh, it's bomb like a Buddha, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and, and then obviously what happens is at some point in our journey, as we, you know, maybe reach um, our later teenage years or, or as we um, enter our adulthood, we kind of plateau in our questioning or in our exploration. You know, the desire to want to discover more, you know, we think that's it, you know. Why are we here? What is this all about? Why are we alive? You know, all of these sort of fundamental uh, fundamental philosophical questions we kind of 
along the way we seem to have concluded them you know whether mm -hmm. religion has concluded them for us or whether science has concluded them for us and so what that has done is kind of extinguished the natural uh, spark or flame of 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 self discovery of of continuing that explorative process that we were born with right, right? Yeah. and so the spiritual walks is essentially my purpose is to try and reignite that spark you know within everyone mm. to to propel you into you know discovering your true essence to discover a a a universal truth in life that all of us are open um, and and would be privileged to discover to, to, to discover while we are here mm. so yeah um, so what would you say is like central to the to making it a spiritual walk and why is it not any other walk yeah I mean I mean I'll be honest with you I put spiritual because I wanted to give away what this is about <laughs> <laughs> you know, I guess be real. It's it's marketing purposes in there as well. Um, yeah, because yeah, the spiritual walks. I wanted to sort of you know give people an idea of what this is really about. What you're getting yourself into because it's one of those topics where you know, you know, like especially when you're uploading on YouTube, you know, you're trying to make you know there's all these guidelines. Make sure your thumbnail looks like this, and make sure your title has this, and all of these keywords, and make sure. You know, there's a good enough content to keep the watch time long and all of this stuff, right? But I kind of wanted to just give away what it is because um, if you're interested, you're interested. If you're not, you're not, right? It's it's one of these things, you know, there's, there's um, you know, it's, it's like uh, what you mentioned, I think, yesterday uh, in our conversation, the reason why Alan Watts, you know, he was a bishop, he said, but yeah. he left because they preach too much, yeah. or they preach, right? And in his words, he said, uh, uh, they asked him, like, did you leave because they, they do not practice what they preach? He's like, no, they practice what they preach. I left because they preach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so much of um, discovery has to be uh, through one's own individual experience. Mm -hmm. And to preach it for others uh, in a way that, well, you must see it the way I do. Yeah. It kind of ruins the experience in itself. Yeah. And kind of, like you said, it concludes it from yeah. the start. So yeah. there is no discovery, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, 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 you know, I wanted the, the spiritual walks to be, you know, this sort of uh, reminder that, hey, you know, there's, there's a lot more to life than your sort of, you know, little perspective of me. You know, yeah. You wake up in the morning. You you take a shower, brush your teeth, eat your breakfast, go to work, come back, and then repeat. And maybe on the weekends you might see some of your friends and stuff. And like we can kind of sort of lose ourselves in that routine. And we may then you know, sort of over some time become stale to, to life, right? Um, very much like how. You know, a cup of water or, or, or let's say a water in a container, if it remains stale, it sort of dies, right? Um, and in the same way, the spark within us to try and discover the truth, to seek the truth, also begins to die. And then all we find is a void later on in life, which, which we happen to call a midlife crisis, maybe, or whatever, right? Where, you know, we don't know what's going on in life and we kind of want to go back to the good old days. And then, you know, there's this like sort of conflict um and it's really because we haven't continued that strive to to discover the truth reminds me of what you were saying yesterday actually now that you mentioned it <laughs> you were like when i was studying all i wanted to do was work when i was yeah. working all i wanted to do was go back to study <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh yeah it's a it's a perpetual loop but, but <laughs> very very interesting you know in this you know um Along this journey, you, you also notice that a big part of self-discovery is to, is to understand the nature of the instruments we have to perceive nature or life yeah. or existence, right? So, so the initial instrument, the mind, you know? The mind as this intellectual tool that helps us decipher the moment to then understand, you know, what is black and white and, and to, to, you know really compare situations to then dissect and discern, you know, <clears throat> and solve a problem. Mm. And, you know, very often I discuss matters like suffering 
and how suffering is um, the, the, the sort of is rooted within the mind, within the intelligence, or in some way, as some people might call it, you know, it's, it's the intelligence attacking or working against itself. Mm. Yeah. You know? So, so, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. We had this conversation about, you know, getting into practices um, that sort of help us um, to, to, you know, become more aware, become more attentive. So, you know... So you mentioned, uh, you know, the intelligence attacking itself. I have a question for you. Well, well for me, I find a lot of the uh, pursuit of truth uh, fundamentally depends on the discovery of what is the self anyway. Why, why have you identified with or is it just purely thought? And if there's a witness of the thought, what is that then? <laughs> Who identifies with that? Yeah. Right? So, um, what would you say uh, suffering, how does suffering play into that? Is it trying to kind of push you into the discovery of what the self is or is it blocking it away? Yeah. So, <clears throat> so what happens is that when 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 the intelligence is attacking itself it's it's you know it's another way of saying you know the ego attacking itself right um, because the intelligence is is it's within that that encompasses the self image of who we are or who we believe to be you know all of this experience all of the i likes and i dislikes and my memories and all of these and my name and the labels and all of these things that sort of combine into this one unit called identity. You know, identity, idea, identity, they are a bunch of ideas. And so, you know, suffering is essentially the identity, you know, attacking itself in some way, right? And, and it's, a, it's a sort of perpetual loop. And this is why it's very often um, you know, useful to have something like psychotherapy because you have an external uh, perspective to view onto uh, the, the sort of cycle of suffering having, you know, taken place within the paradigm of another individual. And um, essentially, you know, any form of practice um, that, that you can really look at, you know, any sort of religion practice, whether it's praying, you know, fasting, meditation, whatever it is, it's always, you know, leaning towards um, that part of yourself, you know, maybe with a capital S, right? That isn't yourself, right? So... What uh, comes before that, though? So what comes before the identification? What is, what is it that comes before one latches on to, this is what I like, this is what I dislike? You know, yeah. What comes before that? Well, it's 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 really it's really when you say a sentence. So let's say you know I like this plant, right? So the sense of I am, isn't it? So exactly. The sense of presence, exactly. of being there to perceive it. First comes the I, then then comes whatever yeah. after the I, right. isn't it? Right? And um, and so it's it's very difficult to go to someone and tell them, listen, you're not your thoughts. Hmm. You know, you're not. You're not what comes ideas. after the eye. Yeah, you're, you're not what just comes the after. eye. <laughs> yeah, you're just the eye, and <laughs> and and to to make that sort of distinguishment, you know, between you know what you're, what we're talking about, it's uh, it's uh, it can be challenging at first, but if this is a discovery that has been made, you know, to the individual, that you know, the content is just the content. Ideas are just the ideas. A thought. Moving past the mind is just like the cloud moving past the sky. You know, if this discovery is made, then then one can feel uh, true liberation from suffering. It doesn't ma it doesn't mean that you won't suffer. Suffering will prevail, but it's the relationship of how suffering is perceived that changes. Mm. And so this is. This is, you know, one one aspect um, of um, of the discovery of, of truth or one's one's true nature. Mm. Uh, a lot of what uh, well, a lot of what identification with thought comes from, it comes from wanting to feel uh, authentic, 
So mm-hmm. I am I am different, and I am different because of the thoughts that I have that are different from other people's thoughts. You know, uh, I like blue, right? <laughs> For instance, mm-hmm. and that separates me from other people called the near that like mm-hmm. uh, like green and orange, right? So a lot of uh, uh, our desire to hold on to identity is because it feels as though it's something authentic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if what happens when you're actually disco- discovering things, or even when you're learning uh, about other people's ideas, and more like you're engaging in discourse, uh, you'll notice something very, um, almost instantly. It's like, oh, you're not very original, actually. <laughs> A lot of what your mind has identified with mm-hmm. is built up on so many ideas of the past mm-hmm. and so many ideas that you share with the closest people around you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so even what you're latching onto as me is actually not you, but an accumulation of what people around you have thought and what people before you have thought. Mm. Uh, and that is actually one of the strongest uh, pushes I've had towards realizing, oh, okay, uh, my mind is not mine. Mm. Rather, you know, and mm. rather it's an accumulation of what has been happening. And naturally there was like, Uh, a slow uh, but constant disidentifying with the thoughts Uh, it's not that there isn't you know I don't walk up to people like ah who are you I (laughs) I don't just say that (laughs) you've got to play the part yeah obviously because there's utility to it right there's there's function yeah you can't just refer to everything it's useful yeah Yeah. and because of that usefulness you you keep it and like you said it, it remains like suffering for example it remains everything remains nothing changes mm-hmm. in the way you uh, quantify or label things it's still the same but now your relationship with it is not that of identification but your relationship is one that is a witness mm-hmm. I am a witness of what is happening rather than I am rather than I am what is happening mm-hmm. yeah I really like the part you know where you mentioned that um the reason the reason we attach ourselves to 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 the ego is because we feel it's so authentic it's the most authentic thing there mm. so it's like you know the ego is a safe haven and and i see and i really see you know the the truth in what in, in what you say that you know about the we find the ego to be authentic but it's funny because a very simple solution to realizing that the ego isn't perhaps the most authentic thing there, you know, and, and, and to realize that it's just an accumulation of, you know, a lot of the information gathered over the time uh, lived, you know, is, is to just widen the perspective a tiny bit, you know. Very often, a lot of us, we live in these bubbles, okay. So the bubbles may be, you know, uh, our families, let's just say, you know. Um, and then you might grow old enough to go to school and then that bubble expands and now you've got school and some school friends in that bubble, right? And then the bubble may grow because you're now going to university and then after that you might go to work. Um, and it's funny, even when people go to holiday, go to a completely different um, side of, of, of the planet, uh, the holidays are like all-inclusive resorts where they still sell fish and chips, you know, that you could get down the road from where you live. And so you're still kind of sort of confined within that bubble. But it's really when that bubble pops that you realize that, okay, you know, everything I am and everything I believe I am is just, you know, learned and picked up over time. But I have a question for you, and that would be, you know, what do you, what would you say is the utility in discovering that, that which we believe is the most authentic aspect of ourselves, which is the accumulation of ideas and who we think we are, you know, what's the utility in discovering that that perhaps isn't the most authentic truth? Hmm. Well, there's a few ways to answer this. Um, but the, I would say the, this question uh, arises to the, to the identity that wants to, anyway, exploit everything around it, that wants to win, that wants to find utility in everything anyway. This question arises from that which has already identified with winning, Mm -hmm. with trying to uh, not just identify patterns for the sake of identifying patterns, but now identify patterns so that it can win in the game of life, or so to speak. Um, 
So when one thinks about the true discovery of the self, he should keep in mind that it does not provide any utility. Right? And in fact, it may destroy a lot of what you value as utility. It will, it will, you will look at things and you will perceive that which you put on a pedestal, suppose for instance, um, you know, addictions or just feeling happiness and things like that, that you, we value, you know, our desires. We value them, we put them on a pedestal. And once one has no longer identified with them so strongly, the, the utility in realizing that may, may destroy them. There is no actual utility to it. It might end up um, leading to a more empty kind of uh, look towards life, but not empty as in it has no meaning, but empty as in it is no longer carrying um, the, the load of all those ideas. You're just witnessing them, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. rather than attaching to everything and valuing it so much and constantly, like you said, in a perpetual loop where you're stuck. You're not stuck anymore because you realize that wanting to even exploit or win or find utility is not a true mm -hmm. uh, uh, mechanism that's built in you, but rather mm -hmm. something that allows you to navigate the paradigm of the world. Right? Mm -hmm. You're not built to do that. You're built for discovery so and curiosity. So so would you say then, you know, obviously, yeah, you're absolutely right, you know, to, to find utility in everything is, is, is that aspect of ourselves that, you know, it's, it's, it's the ego, it's, it's constantly trying to find usefulness and stuff like that. Um, so would you say then, um, in, that, in that regard, that being able to discover that, you know, we are not our minds isn't 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 um, isn't an additional use. However, it's sort of kind of letting go of, mm -hmm. of of something that is existing, which can cause suffering. Is uh, that how you put it? It is the prerequisite to finding what suffering means. It is mm -hmm. the prerequisite to finding what uh, peace means or what joy means. It yeah. is the prerequisite. For our experience. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So essentially, you know, so far we, we've discovered that, you know, the, that the, who, what we see as ourselves, right? The, the name, the, the identity in its entirety, you know, including the memories, the likes, the dislikes, and all of that sort of content. Um, you know, is accumulated, right? Um, and we call that ourselves because, you know, there is utility in doing so, right? But, uh, you know, the reason why we can communicate is through the use of language, you know, stored in the memory bank and, and it has use. But for it to be the be-all and end-all in deciphering, you know, every problem in existence, no, mm. that's not its purpose, right? It's more sort of, you know, within... The, the field of utility, like communication, survival, you know, self-preservation, and these sort of aspects of, of physical being. But as we get into exploration of the truth, right, like, you know, what is all of this about, what happens after death, what happens all of, that's the aspect where the mind is like, whoa, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. So it likes to take facts from science, maybe, or take facts from... Uh, religions or, or even whatever. stories, whatever yeah, it or may stories be. to make its conclusion, to put a cap over it, and then within that cap, you know, that's the safe haven of our existence, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but some people are stubborn; they wish to, you know, <laughs> break through and and look outside the box, so to speak, and continue to explore because that spark within them, the same motivation to put something in their mouth as a baby to discover what that is, is still prevalent. It's still as fired up as ever yeah. to continue. Because life is continuing, continues to happen. Yeah. Life never stopped, really. So why, yeah. why would your discovery stop? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Someone else's conclusions need not be yours. Right? Yeah. Why would you do that? And so that process of realizing what you are not and realizing that what you are is so little right, is the prerequisite 
to just now being able to fully explore life while being present, mm -hmm. not in anticipation of the conclusion, because you realize that the conclusion never comes. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. I think since we've touched upon the conclusion that shouldn't be there, right? <laughs> or the conclusion that isn't a conclusion, um, I guess, I guess, yeah, let's, we, we should wrap this up. Um, Amir, it's lovely to have this conversation oh, with you as usual. Me, no worries. Um, so guys, do make sure you check Amir out. Um, all the links will be in the description. So his channel is called Philosopher Dice. Um, some really cool facts and information and also, you know, uh, forms of introspection that are, that are within his channel. Uh, with a game in the background, yeah, which is really so nice. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching and see you guys later.